Rain affected weekend, mostly in the Friday and the Saturday. We saw rain being a big part of last year's race. Lots of trouble for many different cars, especially Perez here, who we're going to talk about in this video. So what to look forward to after this long break. First off, we have this. If you didn't watch my video on uh, who might be cheating, when they release these regulations. It's not necessarily a technical directive, but it's just a change of the wording of the rules. Uh, take a look up here if you want to go look at this, but I actually called this a lot before everybody else, and it was the only way I could figure out that they would do it. I didn't figure out exactly this way, but this is formula data analysis. A lot of people out there are sort of thinking that there's not necessarily a new -y fiddly break on the Red Bull, or maybe even somebody else, but that it might have been something like this this is a T valve in between the brake lines and so when you move one way or the other it's going to bleed off uh, some of that uh, that braking pressure so that you you get brake vectoring and brake vectoring is simply just uh, braking at different points around each vector of a corner I thought they might have been doing it inside of the caliper uh, so uh, the same kind of bleed off valve that would make it so each pot in the caliper would would squeeze less depending on if you're going around a corner but this would obviously be an easier way to do it, a G sensitive T valve, even between the lines. So I think really something like this might have happened. A lot of people believe it was more of a fuel gate kind of thing, like they were told under the table uh, just to, to stop doing it because we know you're doing it. We've looked at all your kind of stuff. We know there's a T valve in there. And then they got slow in Miami, Red Bull did. And then because they weren't using this and who knows how long they've been using this if they are using it. And then later on down the line, they changed the regulations to state that you, nobody's allowed to do it. Because who knows, there might be multiple people that were doing this through through the years, but still uh, some higher up people, Peter Windsor and Scarabs who are also kind of like in the know the way that the technical way a uh, Formula One car works. Not necessarily me, I don't, I'm not, I build cars, but nothing to the this level uh so i i think probably something like this has been going on and it would explain a lot of the red bulls drop off what do you guys think though i'm not really 100 percent sure on it although the fuel gate thing really kind of is believed to have happened again we don't really have any hammer down proof just speculation but it seems as though that did happen it wouldn't be out of the realm of reasonableness to assume that this actually happened uh, between the FIA and Red Bull. So uh, look for this, because we saw the Red Bull start up very high uh, last year to this year, and then drop off significantly, or at least not get faster like the rest of their uh, competitors did. The other thing to look for is that drop off that we can see here. We can see as soon as, uh, so they did very good in Miami, and then it has not been the best weekend. Now a lot of that is down to Perez, but some of it is down to Verstappen as well, and you can see McLaren gaining those points as time goes on, and as of right now, they're kind of really only 40 some points away, which is a couple DNFs out of what they need to do and they have a lot of races to do that the other thing to look for is for red bulls unreliability keep in mind they have one engine for verstappen that was blown up so they had to take that uh, those penalties at in belgium i imagine they'll probably have to do it again before the end of the year because they keep in mind that one engine that they really needed to for the rest of the year is now gone you'll most likely see perez as well have to take some penalties because it looks like those red bulls aren't as reliable as some of the other drivers uh, McLaren out of the bunch is probably the most reliable of any car. Speaking of Perez and Red Bull, this is from uh, Racing News 365. They asked the question, that's the only reason I put it up here, is he on his laugh, last lifeline? Now, uh, with the summer break, I said immediately uh, that I thought they were going to kick him out and take Daniel Ricciardo. And as soon as I said that, in fact, while I was posting the video, uh, they announced that they were going to keep Perez. Uh, I don't believe them. <laughs> I still think they're going to kick him out. Now, I was wrong about bef at uh, before they race at Zandvoort, but I believe that they will still, he's on a lifeline, really, uh, like these guys say. Uh, he's just lost so much pace compared to his teammate and done so poorly on arguably tracks he should have done better at. Uh, this fall off on pace was much like last year's fall off on pace, only about twice as bad. So watch out for Perez. I think he probably has three races to go. Last year, he didn't do well at Zandvoort just because of that rain that happened he really got caught up in that we saw at Silverstone the same kind of thing happened uh, he got caught out in qualifying 
watch him Saturday. If he makes a mistake and ends up out of qualifying in Q1, I don't, I don't know how many chances he's really going to be given before they are forced to let go of him. Because if McLaren is going to pass Red Bull, it's pretty, it looks like pretty certain that that's going to happen, but other teams could also catch. And if we look at this right here, this is the way that everybody's going. Take a look at Perez. Look at his flat line compared to Max. If we say they're really close at the third round, look at that gap, especially around round six and seven. He has just flatlined over the past couple, over the past 10 races even, I'd say. Well, no, eight races. He's flatlined and Max has just continued to soar with minor dropping off as a little bit of a plateau go there. But the big people to watch for is Hamilton. Keep in mind how far Mercedes were behind at the start of the season. Look at that flat line of points they have here. It's pretty low. They didn't really accumulate too much at the beginning, but now you can see, look at that black line of Hamilton really push up in through the rest of the driver series. He's past Russell, he's past Perez. He's closing in on Sainz Piastri and uh, some of the other drivers. I don't think he's gonna catch, catch Verstappen and Norris because they're a little bit too far away. He's gonna pull Mercedes with him. And this flat line of Russell was some um, reliability in Silverstone and then his disqualification last round. But if he hadn't had those and assumed he would be in the top three for both of those races, he would have another, he would have bagged like another 30, maybe even 40 points on top of that. And Mercedes isn't that far behind. Let's see if we can find the uh, Constructors' Championship here. So Mercedes, if you add 40 points onto there, they're up to 300 and they're only 350 away from Ferrari, who look like they're kind of on the downturn a little bit. If Red Bull really does fall off in performance because maybe they were doing some finicky brake stuff and they're not as quick as they were even halfway through the year, uh, you could see if Ferrari get their stuff back together and Mercedes uh, continue pushing on with good results. Like so let's say Mercedes is doing one twos and stuff for the rest of the year. Uh, you could see Mercedes also catching Red Bull. So they're going to have to make that decision on Perez pretty soon. The other thing we're going to watch out for is Verstappen versus Norris. That's the big thing to watch out for. I think uh, the McLarens continue to be the better car, even though they didn't really show it in Spa. I think overall, their car package is really good for all tracks. And like I say, those uh, penalties that Maxwell might have to take again later in the year, probably at Cota, they'll probably take it at Cota because that's an easy place to pass at, or maybe even Brazil, because you can also get around people there. But I feel like they're probably going to ha take more pain as far as penalties later on, and that is going to affect this championship race between Norris and Verstappen. And even if we don't see that, we're going to see close fighting between the two because Max does not give up that. Now, they're buddy-buddy right now, but uh, uh, and they seem to have gotten back together as far as friendship goes. But uh, I can only see them coming in again together like we saw in Austria. Ferrari had their crazy bouncing. They're one of the last teams that I know of that is still dealing with this bounciness. Now, I know they're using a different suspension than every other team. They have gone with, oh, I always get this wrong. I think they're still using pull rod suspension when everybody else is using push rod, I think. And most suspect that that is the reason why they're still experiencing bouncing issues because their suspension geometry is completely different to everybody else. So they're really having issues getting that car around the track without bouncing. And it's really hampering their overall speed. We saw this Ferrari be lightning at the first of the year and it has not been like that. So Mercedes could pass Ferrari. Do we even see Ferrari flatlining throughout the year and ending up where they did like in Silverstone and Canada, like almost accumulating no points throughout the weekend? Could be. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the weekend to look for as well. Go look at my weather video. I did a whole one on weather. I am Canadian, Eastern Canadian, so we love to talk about the weather. So I did a whole video on that. Check it out. If you're new, subscribe. Throw me a like if you got a second, and I'll see you guys next time.